Alright, so, hello and welcome back to another episode of, uh, Final Fantasy VI Blindfolded LLG. So, in this episode, I'm gonna be taking out the cranes, which is gonna be quite nasty, I think. First, I'll tent up. The next order of business would be to equip my relics properly. I probably should have, uh... Taught everyone bolt two before coming here. That that was an oversight on my part. It would have helped a lot in this fight. I, I was too lazy to do it on the belt when I actually had the chance. Uh, and on second thought, it would have been worth my time. Another thing that could have helped was getting the angliform rage. But on second, third, and fourth thought, I'm definitely not wasting that much time to try and get the angliform rage. It was, took long enough to get aspic and that. There were two possibilities for me to get that, two formations that the Espic was in, whereas the angle form was only in one, so... That would have been nice to get, but it didn't happen, so I don't really care. So I'm just gonna stack Gao as much as possible, and I'm also gonna stack Locke as much as possible, so that uh, one Gigavolt can kill, as well as one attack from Locke, will usually kill the right crane. So, I'll be taking the Atlas Armlet off of Siam for now, and uh, chucking it on Locke. Which gives just enough damage, and not even always, so... So... And... Siam, I'll leave the wall ring on him, so that he can take some fire twos later on in the fight. When I'm fighting only one crane, he's gonna be mostly my utility guy because there's not a whole lot else he can do. Sets are unfortunately I can't equip, which is a shame, because it would help a lot more if I could. Alright, so I'm pretty sure that's it. I think Locke died. Say goodbye to my chance of winning this time. Well, 
well, at least I can do a litmus test to see if Locke made it. Yeah, he did. But Gal, I think, is dead now. needs the healing. You must be Gao. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Please just hit the right crane with Eagle Bolt. Yes, he actually did it too. Unfortunately, he's at full health. Alright. Hopefully this will kill him. Oops. Oh, uh, he was already dead. Tonic, potion, phoenix down. Tonic, potion. This should be lock, I think. Yeah, I think Setzer died from his uh, wounds. Heal yourself, because that might help. I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I don't think he's great taking a great deal of damage of electricity, I mean. I can't remember for sure, but I'm gonna go with bomb here. Alright, Gao needs the healing. Potion Gal. Setzer got his butt kicked out. Dang it, I wasted the crane shook the deck message because I happened to be in the menu already. Come on, Gal, just one more. Alright, I'll attack him here. This will trigger him to use a fire spell next turn. Uh, tonic, potion, phoenix down. Um, Setzer. Lock, you've been voted off the airship. Come on, Gao, just hit him with one more blaze, please. You did it. Good work. Phew. But it's only just beginning. Because we have a really, really nasty spot coming up. And by we, I mean I, because you're not playing. Sorry. This, this, this it couldn't have been timed worse. Oh, okay, it could have been timed worse. If it hadn't been before the Crane's battle, I probably would have quit the challenge right here. Nah, I'm joking. I would have probably gone back and did redid everything for the Bolt 2 spell, because it would have actually been worth my time to redo everything just to get Bolt 2. I feel like such an idiot for not planning this out uh, the first time I went and beat the Cranes.
Unfortunately, this isn't just a cutscene. It is plenty interactive, which really sucks here, because I don't want to do anything else right now, but I kind of have to. So I get to take control of Meduin, and this sucks for three reasons. Well, probably more than three, but first of all, this part is really long. Second of all, I... Uh, I can't open the menu, which means I can't A can't tell if I'm in a cutscene, and B can't I uh, tell when the cutscene's over. So it's really hard to recover. Especially since there's no noises at all in for a long time until the music fades out. And finally, the fact that Minduin is permanently dashing. That that's actually a really bad thing. Because uh it's hard to take one step at a time when he's permanently dashing. So I have to be really careful here. For, for example here, uh, I'm taking one step down and then one step right, because that way I can mess up one of them and I'll still make it through if I take two steps. Now hopefully I didn't take two steps either of those times. I'm kind of paranoid about it, especially after that craned fight. Other than Meduin's room, a lot of this place is being reduced to sort of like one of those uh, areas covered in ice that ends up being like a puzzle where you always have to walk straight to the end of a place. That's kind of what this becomes. So I walk to the flower here, then I walk to the tree, then I walk to the other tree, then I walk to the fence, then I walk to the fence again, the other fence, well the other part of the fence. Then I walk to the gate. Thankfully this gate blocks my path. I actually didn't think it would, but it does, which is super nice. Walk out here. So now I walk all the way to the right because there's a tree here. All the way up. Now I'm in the flower bed. Alright, so here it may look dangerous because I have to take steps to the left and uh, like one step areas, but it's actually not that bad. Because if I uh, go two steps here, I'll end up just walking farther than anticipated, but after doing this three times, I should end up in the same spot no matter what happened. I really hope I don't mess this up. Alright. Now I've found the corpse. Hopefully. And by corpse I mean just unconscious person. And now, yippee, we get to press the button for half an hour because I have absolutely no indication of when this cutscene ends. This spot is so stupid. I'm just gonna keep complaining because I've got nothing better to do here. This room is pretty much like the only spot that gets a pass from the jerkiness of the rest of it. <laughs> because it ends up being kind of straightforward. For whatever reason, the game's nice enough to allow you to talk to Madonna or Madeline or whatever you feel like translating it as from the foot of the bed instead of having to go around, which saves me from some effort. I suspect that's enough time. I only have to take like one step there, I don't even need to hold it at all. So now I should be at the foot of the bed. Talk to you, and we have to go through another of these cutscenes. Yippee. The worst part is, I I could have messed up like in the first two seconds in Meduin's room, but I can't tell. Well, at least the good news is, if I messed up, it's probably in Meduin's room, so I guess I might be able to get out of it. Just by maneuvering myself to a spot I know, it's probably worth the effort. 
This isn't uh, the sort of time where I just want to redo the whole thing. So if I did happen to get lost at some point, I'll probably just end up walking around like an idiot for half an hour, but that's how it's going to have to go, I suppose. Alright, so Meduin should wake up in bed, which, in one of the few pieces of convenience in this place, is lined up exactly with where I uh, started at the beginning of the first part. Alright, so I'm hopefully walking at the door again. Oh man. Everything should be bright and cheery now. Not that depressed, gloomy, nighttime sort of thing. I didn't need to walk for that long there. Hit the tree. Hit the other tree. This is kind of like Meduin's waking up routine. Like, get up, instead of getting up, eating breakfast, brushing his teeth, get out, walk into flower, walk into tree, walk into other tree, walk into fence, walk into the gate. down. I suppose it could be worse. There could be ninjas here. <laughs> Maybe I should have held it for longer there. That's not something I should have thought about. There's NPCs walking around now. Hopefully if I, I didn't walk far enough, I at least went far enough to end up coming into the same spot through some twist. two more because I feel like it. Alright. Talk to Yura. Go through the thing. Now, so not, this is uh, one spot in particular where it, it's pretty obvious that I'm going out of my way to, taking one, to take one step. I don't mess it up that often, to be honest. It's only like one out of ten times I mess it up. But if I didn't be careful, if I, if I wasn't careful, then I would end up doing it around ten times. So the chance of me messing it up once, at least, would be quite high. <laughs> and I don't want to do go through that after the cranes. Down. Right. Down. Left. Up. Now please, please be in the right spot. That's the worst of it if I'm through it. Unfortunately, I don't get any uh, indicator till the music fades out at the end of this cutscene that may or may not be playing. be in the right spot. Yes, thank goodness. Thank flipping goodness. <laughs> As you can probably tell, I'm pretty nervous about something that's normally a non-event. This whole sequence is usually just a time to wind down after the Magitek facility, but... I had some timing with the music worked out to know when this was going to end, but I don't really care. I'm just going to mash the button for a long time. I don't remember. It's been too long and... Oh wait, never mind. It was that trumpet thing. I'll go a little bit of extra time just for safety. All 
right. I'm getting the urge to press right and up here, which would be a really bad thing to do. I am going to walk downwards. Why am I being so picky about this part anyway? This is the only part where I actually do get a cue to tell me where I am, so if I did mess up here, I could work it out. See, the music should change here. It's pretty much the only indicator I have of anything. Alright, soon after the music starts, I can run down and talk to that fairy noob at the bottom. I held that way longer than was necessary, but clearly I'm doing that for just about everything. Now this racist wolf guy decides to go and be a jerk. He probably already did that like 30 seconds ago, but I'm being paranoid when <laughs> with good reason. This next this next part actually took me like 10 minutes to work out. <laughs> I was gonna get through this pretty much 100%. It took me a long time to figure out a way that didn't involve counting several steps, which is, well, at least not in a bad spot, which would likely be the doom for any run because I'd likely press, go down two steps running at least once. Alright, I shall hazard a guess that this is good enough, but I'll, actually I probably didn't need to worry that hard because as long as I don't press the A button here. I'll get an indicator without having to press it again, which means I'll still be in the same spot if I were to do all of this walking and the cutscene wasn't technically over. Alright, so the first step is to run straight at the door, run into this cabbage. That's always the first step to any good plan, run into the cabbage. Alright. One, two, three. All right. So I could take, th I could, if I took three steps there, I'm fine. If I took six steps there, I'm fine. So minimum and maximum, I'm good either way. Now I r go right once, run to the wall, and then run all the way up into this tree. That that's the part that took me forever to work out how to get lined up with this here. I was originally trying just timing it so that I ran out the door and ended up in the doorway in, the, in that exact spot, and not only is the timing on that slightly risky, not really much, I... after that there was really nowhere to go from there, like, there's nowhere to s finish it. Fortunately I get an indicator just for walking in the doorway, so I could try randomly guessing if I do. if I do something wrong at this point. So now I should be uh, above the flower bed running into the rock. Run over here. Thank goodness there isn't a little notch here. I'm actually kind of surprised. There's no little notch that's trolling me or anything. I just get to go straight down. Now for one another one of these uh, spots that looks like I'm sliding across ice or something, because I'm just going to be going to, through a very circuitous route. Right. Up. Left. This will bring me out of this uh, stupid little notch here, and out into the wide open area. Up, I hit something. I kind of have to go around in a C shape here, because that's what lines me up nicely.
this part of the route just happened to work out and send me to the... The, the trees just happen to be placed in the right spots that I end up at the right place a lot of the time, which is kind of funny, but... I suppose it's likely that there would have been a route through, unless they were specifically designing it to troll uh, blindfolded players. See, uh, one of those times I went left, I definitely went two spaces left, even though I was only trying to go one. So yeah, there's my safety net coming into play anyway. Thank goodness. Now I, I, I can hear the winds of victory. I'm not sure how these are the winds of victory, but that's kind of how it goes here in Esperland. I feel like when I'm nervous, I start talking more and more incoherently. That is the stabbing noise of hope, because I have finally defeated this segment. This is probably the hardest segment yet. It would have been much easier if I had Bolt 2 on everybody, but grinding up Bolt 2 would have actually taken longer than the hour and a half I spent doing the crane battle there, so it actually wouldn't have been worth it in either case. So, yeah. I can't really chastise my decision there to not grind up bolt 2 on everyone. It wouldn't have helped for anything else in the Magitech facility anyway. It wouldn't have been conservative enough for number 24, although I guess I could have gotten an extra hit or something in with Locke and Cyan. And on number 128, it would have... Okay, airship. I can take off the blindfold. The funny thing is, this isn't even one of the longest segments, but... Well, it's the longest LLG segment by any means. No, I don't want your stupid technique. This has gone long enough as it is. Alright, I'm not even sure why I took the blindfold off there. I don't think I really needed to have it off to land the airship two steps away. But... There we go. Finally. Done. See you next time. These noises are annoying. Alright, so this is Gao. I heard a bolt spell go off. Alright, so all I want Gao to do is use the spear in. 1, 2, one, two 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Spear in. Now, if he gigavolts the one on the right, that will help a lot. If he doesn't gigavolt the one on the right, uh, things are going to get messy. Oh, that's not good at all. Alright, so I'm gonna heal off Locke if he's still alive. So I took an attack, a bolt, and a... wow. Okay, that's good. He did a proc too, so that's definitely enough damage. Heal the lock. Oh wait, that punch was probably Gao, so he wasted his turn. Alright, so let's heal up Gao, because he's important. Oh, that's not good, somebody just died. So this is Cyan. Let's wait a second. Okay, if a potion didn't go off, I think I was dead. Tonic, potion, phoenix down. I'm oh, not good. Ugh. What menu am I in? There we go, items. I don't know who this is. I never really worked out a way to tell between sets and lock. Oh, I should have been using slots anyway. Being adult. Nothing happened. I think Gao's probably dead. Yeah. So this is Vaporite. Uh, let's hope that's what I should do. Punch. Potion yourself. Get yourself back up to full HP after that attack you took. Blaze. Okay, is he dead? Not quite. Yes, he's dead. Holy cow, I got it. Second try. I can't believe it. Yeah. Maybe not figuring this part out wasn't the brightest thing on my part. I might have to do that, redo that battle again unless I can pull some serious skills here.
yeah, probably never made it out of this room. All right, so this is lock. Two hits. They weren't on lock, which is good. They weren't both on lock, but although if lock gets attacked from the back, he can die from one. He can he doesn't always? I think anyway. All right, so this is Gao. Here is the important part. He has to gigavolt the right crane because I really don't have any other way to take them out fast enough. I don't have the angle form rage, which is unfortunate, but there's no way I would have done that. I would have gotten bolt two faster probably. One, two. Don't go back. Just restart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This is Cyan. Dang it, wrong crane. That's not good at all. I can still theoretically come back from this, but it's unlikely. I think I'm probably dead. If Gao doesn't gigavolt the right crane on the first turn, I'll, I usually die, and him gigavolting the left crane is probably the worst thing that can happen. Ancestor's dead. That's not good either. Tonic, potion, phoenix down. He must eat both the crane attacks. Shoot, did he get another turn off? That is, uh... You are in magic. I need to kill Gao off as fast as possible now. Don't want to waste that animation time. That's not good. You are lock. I think. Yes, you are lock. Uh, dang it, I'm dead. Y yeah, that's not... Alright, P2. This is lock. This is Gao. Okay. Everyone got burned. Someone got attacked. It wasn't lock, so that's a good thing. Oh, wow, two procs. Don't need them both, but... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Here's the left line part. If I, I need to, and you'll hear me say that like eight times in the bloopers, that exact same phrase. I should really stop saying it. I, I probably don't even need to repeat myself because you're probably going to see it in the bloopers. My explanation. And you'll probably be able to figure it out even without the explanation. Yes, King Wolf to the right crane, and he's dead. Alright, so hopefully Gao took the hit. Then he's probably at like 2 HP. He's probably got like no HP left if that's the case. If Setsu took the attack, that's not good, I suppose. At least Gao's taking some damage. Okay, so that means either... I think I may be the only person who could have survived a multi-target fire and an attack, but then again, Simon would have been hit by a multi-target fire, so it could have hit him too. Okay, that targeted the crane, so Gao is dead, which means he took the attack, which means Simon probably survived that. Whew. Um, Tonic, Potion, Phoenix down. I'm lucky enough that both Setzer and Lockers are alive right now. Phoenix down. I'll Phoenix down Gao. Uh, if your Setzer, I better not put you in the item menu. I won't be able to tell you and lock both apart, and you'll both be useless. Oh, crap, that was Setzer. Well, I got them mixed up. That's not good. Okay. Let's just reason this out. This has to be Setzer's slots. Or not. What could that have possibly been? Okay, this must be locked. The problem is, I can't tell whether Cyan or, or Gao just died there. That's not good at all. I'm wasting time, I should not be doing this. Just take a guess. Dang it, no. Setsu just died. But Cyan's still alive, and I know that now. Tonic, Potion, Phoenix down. I only have so many of these, I better start reviving Gao right away. Okay, something's not right. What's going on here? Dang. Tonic, Potion, Phoenix down. I'm probably going to lose this now. Pretty sure Locke's my only surviving character at good HP. I might have enough time. Did I hear a reflect? How does that even work? Oh, I revived Cyan. Crud. I don't think I have any more Phoenix Downs. That sucks. Oh, sweet. I actually did have one more. Golden Wire of Hope, I suppose. I can technically win this. Oh, how did he get an attack in there? Gao's still alive. I'm pretty sure it's Gao. No, it's a Cyan. Crud. So, backup strats? One, two, three, four. Oh yeah, they count. <laughs> oh, that's not good. <laughs> they counter retort. I forgot that. Well, I forgot that things counter retort. I'm gonna take this guy down with block. This makes no sense. This is impossible. <laughs> this is pretty much impossible. Have your fun. Turn Phoenix down. And I don't have any. Yep, I'm toast. If only I had to realize that guy was on float. There it goes. Any. There it goes. He's gonna get a Volk Cyan now. <laughs> the left crane got uh, fire three. That's kind of funny, actually. Nine, ten, eleven.
Yep, I lose. Whatever, lock. Oh wait, this is still lock. Oh no, I'm dead. Fuge. It's so close. Just one more blaze. Uh oh. I think I just died. Oh, Vaporites. Come on, Gal, please just use blaze once. Dang it! Ah, oh, come on, I was so close. I was... Crud, that bolt spell came at just the wrong moment. I think this is lock. I'm not even sure where, where that bolt spell went, it was just in the way of what I was trying to do. Could have been multi-target or single target. I don't think it reflected, though. Well, lock's dead. This isn't going well, but it can still be salvaged quite easily if Gao Gigavolt's in the right direction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Well, Gao did not Gigavolt, but he did go in the right direction. Well, Gao's probably dead, too, now. But I'll just give him the benefit of the doubt, because otherwise I'm dead. Tonic. Potion. Phoenix down. Yeah, I guess Gal must have survived and then I uh, took that bolt too anyway. One, two, three. Uh oh, whoops. Is that what I meant to do at all? <coughs> well, I was seven flush. And that was Cyan. Might as well let Cyan go. Cyan, hurry it up. Ugh. Um, why am I in here? Well, both lock and sets me feeling, so I don't really need to check. On the second thought, that had to have been lock anyway. Dang it, Gal. Someone just got hit. I'll heal. I don't even know. Don't even know what's worth it. Gow, you're having such a large opening. Oh, come on. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I just died. 